Alaska, the frigid northern extremity of America. Come April, the harsh winter begins to loosen its grip on the land. The seemingly endless nights grow shorter day by day and the frozen wilderness starts to thaw. In the heart of this majestic setting lies a small town not far from Fairbanks, whose weary inhabitants eagerly await the arrival of spring. Montgomery Memorial Hospital watches over the town like an old man, and in this remote hospital toil two doctors who are about to be swallowed by the jaws of fate. Male. He has a gash on his chest and he's losing blood fast. How was he injured? He ignored the tour guide's warning and picked a fight with a grizzly. His blood pressure is 70, his heart rate's 130, and he's lost consciousness. Got it. Can you hear me? We're going to take you into the hospital. My name is Valerie Blaylock. I'll be treating you. Don't worry. You've been badly injured, but it's not hopeless. In fact, you're quite lucky that there are two skilled doctors in a remote place like this. I've confirmed the patient's blood type and blood count, Dr. Vaughn. Do we have enough blood on hand? If not, then make arrangements. Have Eric make a quick trip to the blood center. Now what about the x-rays? It looks like he has two broken bones. We'll have to rebuild them. Nurse, have an ample supply of antibiotic gel ready. It's hard to believe, but situations like this don't seem to phase me anymore. And here I thought I was going to be able to kick back and enjoy the northern lights every night. Oh, quit your whining. Doctor, the patient's vitals are dropping. All right, let's get down to business. I have dinner reservations. Let's begin the conference. The patient has suffered a large laceration extending from his right shoulder to his chest. He also has a compound fracture in his right arm. The bone fragments seem to be aggravating the surrounding tissue. There are two objectives in this operation. The first is to stop the bleeding and suture the wound. The second is to retrieve the bone fragments, reform them, and set them in place. The blood won't be arriving for a while. We don't have time to wait. We have to begin the procedure immediately. I agree. Time is of the essence. Let's get started. Let's begin the operation. The patient's vitals are low. Please use the syringe to stabilize. Please inject more. We need his vitals have been stabilized. Begin treating the external wound. First, you'll need to sew up the laceration with the suit. Begin suturing the wound. So far, so good. The suturing is complete, but there are still some small wounds left. Please treat them with antibiotic gel. That takes care of the external wounds. Let's move on to treating his arm. Apply the antibiotic. The area has been disinfected. Now, make an incision with the scalpel. Begin treating the fracture. First, retrieve all the bone fragments. Use the forceps to remove the place the fragments on the first fragment has been removed. Don't forget to treat the wound. The third pair of bone fragments still remaining. Please remove them all. Looks like this bone is warped. Let's see if we can reshape it with the forceps. Now we need to reconnect. Twist your wrist to maneuver the fragment into the correct position. You've successfully placed the first bone fragment. Please continue. Man, this is like a jigsaw puzzle. That's not the correct location. Please look at the shape of the bone fragment more carefully. All of the bone fragments have been properly placed. Now, that does it. Let's close them up. Now suture it in the same manner as the laceration. 
Okay, use the antibiotic gel to stop the, the bleeding. Apply the bandage from one. Good work, everyone. Good work, doctor. Now, I don't know how you can remain so calm during an operation. I'll transfer the patient to room three. He'll need to remain here for about five days. Should I send a bill for a guided tour of Montgomery Memorial to his travel agent? Good idea, but don't serve him anything fancy. We don't want him getting too comfortable. I see that the operation went well. It did. So when are they going to give us the key to the city? We are making Alaska safe for tourists, after all. I'll take it from here. That is, if you don't mind stepping aside for an old-timer like me. No, not at all. Just let me know if anything comes up. I'll be at Lucky's, enjoying some grilled salmon. Well, I don't let my stomach call the shots, so I'd be happy to stay a little longer, sir. That's quite all right, Dr. Blaylock. There's nothing more we can do for him for the time being. Blaylock, how are you today? Good morning, sister. I'm doing well, thank you. Seems like it's finally starting to warm up. Oh, don't be fooled, dear. The cool temperatures can return quite suddenly, so be sure to carry a sweater with you at all times. Oh, okay, I will. <laughs> Looks like you've taught me something new about this town once again, sister. And be careful not to get caught in any storms. They can be absolutely dreadful. Well, I must be going, but if there's anything new troubling you, please come see me at church. Oh, thank you. But I've been okay lately. I I've been meaning to attend Sunday service, though. Good. I hope to see you before we move to the new church we're building. You will, I promise. Hey, Doc. Am I gonna be okay? Why wouldn't you be? Well, if I had the cash, I would have gone to a real hospital, but I don't, so I'm stuck here. Mr. Carlton, you may not be aware, but this hospital is affiliated with Concordia Medical Institute in Los Angeles. Only the finest and most skilled doctors are sent here. Oh, really? Because everyone around town says that this is where all the rejects get dumped. That's ridiculous. They say that Dr. Montgomery, the guy who built this hospital, was really good. But that was what, uh, 20 years ago? I mean, it doesn't matter now, because he's dead. Well, I'm still alive. So let's just try to get through this together, all right? Now, the bad news is you have a tumor. But the good news is it's benign, so don't worry. I could perform this operation in my sleep. Okay, the nurses will help you get ready, so please return to your room. All right. Can I call my wife first? I want to... Talk to her about my will. <sighs> Why in the world would they want me to come back? Dr. Vaughn, are you there? Oh, Dr. Hoover. I have an operation to prepare for, so... Well, I wanted to speak with you about that matter I mentioned earlier. <laughs> Perfect timing. I was just looking over those documents you gave me. I'm sorry, but I can't agree to this. Oh, and why not? I couldn't do that to this place. How would you function without us? So even if it's a direct order, I can't comply. You understand, don't you? Yes, but I believe I neglected to mention that Professor Wilkins contacted me personally. So perhaps you should consult with Valerie before you make up your mind. Well, I don't know about her, but there's no way I'm going back. Excuse me, Doctor. Dr. Blaylock is paging you. Please excuse me, Dr. Hoover. I have an operation to perform. I'd appreciate it if you could arrive on time, Marcus. Sorry, could you review the briefing? Of course, Dr. Vaughn. The test results show that Mr. Carlton has multiple tumors in his stomach. They're benign, but rather large. 
So as a precaution, we're going to excise them using the Powell procedure. The Powell procedure, huh? Well, that may be difficult for a reject doctor like me. Oh, Dr. Vaughn, you're not letting the patient's rude comment bother you, are you? I guess we'll just have to show him how talented we really are. Yeah, you're right, Val. Let's get started. Okay, let's begin the operation. Disinfect the area with antibiotic gel before you make your incision with the scalpel. Small tumors seem to have formed. Let's burn them before we use antibiotic gel to heal any wounds caused by all the small tumors that can be visually confirmed have been treated. Now let's begin extracting the tumor. To excise the center of it, follow the place the cytoplasm has been drained. Use the forceps to place the now we use the forceps to place the synthetic applied antibiotic. The membrane has been attacked. According to the test results, there should be more tumors. The affected area is around here. All right. The tumor has been located. Okay. Now excise it with the scalpel. Please remove the excised. Small tumors have formed. It must be due to the main tumor. Apply antibiotic gel on the synthetic membrane to fix it. be all the large tumors, please treat the excised area and the small tumors. The procedure is complete. Let's close him up. All right, close him up. Treat the bleeding before you bandage the sutured incision. That completes the operation. Good work, everyone. I feel so much better. My stomach doesn't hurt for a change. I'm glad I decided to go through it after all. <laughs> if anyone else had performed the operation, I doubt it would have gone so well. Yeah, you guys were amazing. I'll be sure to ask for you two next time I need to have an operation done. Do you think there will be a next time here at Montgomery Memorial? For me, there will. <laughs> I thought you'd say that. What a storm. We'll have to close early. Too bad we can't leave, though. We finally managed to dodge the late shift, and we're stuck here anyway. Well, this bed has my name on it, so I'm gonna get some much-needed sleep. Hey, isn't that investigator from Concordia supposed to stop by sometime today? I'm sure you'll be the first they'll want questioned. Oh, don't worry. They won't be sending anyone out here in this weather. Hmm. I guess since no one else is around, all calls are being transferred to us. Dr. Blaylock speaking. Is this the hospital? I need help. Someone's been badly injured. Marcus, we have an emergency. Yes, this is Montgomery Memorial. Please remain calm. Now can you tell me what happened? A man was accidentally shot in the chest with a rifle. He's bleeding profusely. I estimate that he's already lost about 500 milliliters. His CS is 233. All right, we'll prepare for your arrival. How long before you can get here? Mister, how long will it take us to get there? Ten minutes. Got it. We'll be ready. All the nurses have gone home. We'll have to do this on our own. Can you prep the OR? The IV, BGA, and CT are all ready to go. So is the blood count and cross-matching test. Looks like the storm's headed our way. I'm so glad you're still open. Here's the patient. We're ready for him. I've managed to temporarily stop the bleeding, but his vitals have dropped significantly. He's been shot in the chest. It looks like the bullet's still lodged inside him. His condition is critical. There isn't a moment to lose. Everyone's already gone home. 
so you'll have to help me get him on the stretcher. No problem. I'm actually a nurse, so if you're short-handed, I can help you with the procedure. Now it all makes sense. I was wondering how you knew to report all that information. We can definitely use your help. Come on, let's go. Marcus, the patient's here. And this girl is a nurse. She's going to help us. Finally, some good news. So does she have a name? Oh, sorry. I didn't think to ask you. I'm Elena Salazar from the Concordia Medical Institute in Los Angeles. I'm surprised Concordia sent someone as young as you. It's nice to see you again, Dr. Vaughn. Have we met before? Let's save the introductions for later. We've got an operation to perform. I know this is an emergency, but please allow me to advise you on the situation. The patient is a Caucasian male in his 50s. He's suffering from a gunshot wound from a rifle. The bullet didn't exit his body. It's still inside him. Due to the excessive amount of bleeding, there's a possibility the bullet nicked his heart. There's no time to waste. He's lucky you got him here so quickly. The objectives in this operation are to extract the bullet and treat the hemorrhaging areas. Okay, let's give it our all. All right, let's begin. Okay, let's give it our all. We need to treat the... The round seems to have entered the body here. Let's treat the gunshot wound before we open him up. I prepare the synthetic membrane. Please affix it to the wound. Now, the gunshot wound has been successfully treated. Now, let's treat the remaining wounds. All the external wounds have been treated. Let's open him up. He's in bad shape. Please keep an eye on his vitals while you treat his doctor. You located the gunshot wound. We're dealing with his heart. So please be extremely careful when you extract the round. Let's drain the blood. A mistake could be fatal. What? This round, the other half, must still be lodged inside. We have no choice. We have to open the gunshot wound wider with the scalpel. We can't get a pulse with the round still lodged inside him. Please extract it quickly. Open up the gunshot wound with the scalpel and keep an eye on his butt. A blood pool has formed. Please drain it quickly. You've located the remaining piece. Please... The round has been extracted. Please treat the remaining wounds. That completes the treatment of the wounds. Now please resuscitate the patient using the defibrillator. Now move the... This gauge displays the amount of power being charged. Press the Z and B... You're not getting a pulse. We have a pulse. <sighs> what a relief. Okay. Let's close him up. Doctor, please close him up. Okay. Let's finish by bandaging the sutured incision. That completes the operation. I was worried during that one part of the operation, but we made it. Great work, Doctor. Uh, really? Yes, really. I'd love for you to assist us again sometime, if possible. But first, we should clarify some things. What instructions did Professor Wilkins give you prior to coming here, Elena? You're right. I shouldn't hide my true intentions, but I didn't come here to spy on you. And I didn't come here to help you. I came here to ask you to operate on me, Dr. Vaughn. What? It's the pump unit you implanted in my pancreas seven years ago. It isn't going to last much longer. Please, Dr. Vaughn, you have to help me. Now I remember. So you're that little girl.
Elena has intractable pancreatic necrosis, an extremely rare genetic immune system disorder. The disease surfaces due to stress caused by aging, viruses, or chemical substances. If left untreated, it could cause septicemia, cellular necrosis, and a severe case of pancreatitis. Thankfully, an effective immune suppressant was developed in 2015, so now the disorder can be treated by implanting a high-efficiency pump system in the patient. But why do you need another operation? Is the system malfunctioning? Yeah, it's designed to last for 20 years. The antibody has denatured. The medication isn't working. To compensate, the pump's immunity suppressant control chips need to be replaced. And you expected that someone at a remote hospital like this could do it? I wanted to ask Dr. Vaughn to perform the operation, since he already saved me once before. I'm sorry I didn't contact you beforehand. Oh, no need to apologize. You're quite welcome here. Placing the pump unit is no easy task and tampering with the implanted unit might cause stress and trigger an acute reaction. An inexperienced doctor wouldn't even attempt such an operation. Doctor, we've received a shipment from Concordia. According to the label, it requires refrigeration. I had them send all the materials necessary to perform the operation. Marcy, please refrigerate them at once. The patient appears to be in good condition, but that doesn't mean we have time to spare. Once the preliminary test results are in, we'll need to operate immediately. So, it's a difficult operation, huh? Yeah, it'll require some preparation. Oh, are you heading back home, Dr. Blaylock? Oh, hi, Elena. Yes, I am. You're staying here tonight, I assume. Yes. I was hoping to catch a glimpse of the Northern Lights. I see. Well, try to stay warm. By the way, I wanted to ask you about how you became a nurse. It must have been tough. Not only were you young, but you also had your illness to contend with. Well, I was working towards something I really wanted, so I was able to overcome those obstacles. And in the process, I was able to learn more about my condition. But you even received your international nursing license, right? That's amazing. I was grateful to be alive. People are capable of so much when they don't take life for granted. You're really mature for your age. I think you have a great career ahead of you. Thanks. I can't wait to get back to treating patients, as opposed to being one. <laughs> Look! The Northern Lights! It's so beautiful. Yes, it is, isn't it? Elena, let's both do our best during tomorrow's operation. Remain centered. Breathe. Focus. As the stars have taught me, I am one with life. I am one with now. Remain centered. Breathe. Focus. Should have unplugged the phone. Yeah, who is it? Greetings. I'm sorry to disturb you so late, Marcus. Professor Wilkins. I suspected this would be a good time to reach you. It would have been nice if I could have finished meditating. I see you're still dabbling in witchcraft. Well, that's good, because it is precisely that sorcery of yours we must rely on now. Look, I'll perform the surgery on Elena. Just don't expect me to return to Concordia. It seems there's been a misunderstanding. She's not the reason I contacted you, Marcus. There's another patient I'm concerned about. What are you trying to say? Stigma has awakened, and I require your assistance. What? Didn't I tell you that it was too dangerous to tamper with? So you don't think you share in any of the responsibility, hmm? Well, don't be ridiculous. It's too late to wash your hands of this. However, there's no reason to let your feelings of guilt torment you. In fact, I have some good news for you. The patient I'm referring to is me. Well then, we shall continue this conversation another time. Professor Wilkins has stigma. I can't believe it. You look distracted today. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks. If you say so. Just as long as you'll be able to use your healing touch. Well, if all goes as planned, I won't need to. Don't worry, Elena. Everything will be fine. Oh, I'm not worried. Now, about these microchips we're replacing. Well, they went to the trouble of including instructions from the designer himself, so I'll indicate when you should bring them out. Fortunately, his directions are perfectly clear. I'll have to thank Professor Kerensky.
The operation is sure to be a success with such a well-prepared team. All right, Elena, I'm going to begin administering the anesthesia. Okay, I'll try to get some sleep. All right, let's go over this one more time. The objective of this operation is to readjust the pump unit installed in the pancreas. Depending on the condition of the pump, we'll most likely have to change the control chips. There's a high risk that there may be hemorrhaging as a result of the chip exchange. Follow my lead and keep in mind that we may need to make some changes along the way. All right, let's make this an operation to remember. The control chips are ready, doctor. Okay, keep them on hand so they'll be ready when I call for them. Okay, let's begin. We will now begin Ms. Salazar's operation. The implant is in the pancreas. Please perform a laparotomy. This must be the implant. Let's use antibiotic gel to stop the hemorrhaging. The wounds have been treated, but it's only a matter of time before it ruptures again. We're going to have to replace the implant's control chips. First, we'll have to disable the current chips, then we can exchange them with the new ones. Use the laser to disable the chip. The control chip has been disabled. Use a scalpel to cut it. The control chip has been disconnected. Now insert the new control chip into where the old exchange is complete. We'll repeat this procedure with the rest of the control chips. Chip has been exchanged. Just one more to go. This is the last one. Huh? Use the drain to clear away the blood before continuing with the chip exchange. Unbelievable! Another blood that something's not right. Why won't the hemorrhaging stop? I had a bad feeling something would go wrong. I guess I have no choice. Remain centered. Breathe. Focus, as the stars have taught me. No. Okay, I've got some time until it hemorrhages again. I need to continue the operation while I can. The implant's adjustments are... We're done, here. The healing touch. Amazing. Mm. Sorry, but I'll have to leave the rest to you. I think I overdid it. Marcus? Hey, Nurse Bloom, get Marcus out of here. I'll handle the rest of the operation. <sighs> ah, you're awake. You seem completely drained, Marcus. Is it because you haven't used your gift recently? Yeah, I'm exhausted. How's our patient? I completed the rest of the operation. Her condition's stable now. I'll keep an eye on her, so feel free to get some rest. That sounds good. But I'll probably end up freezing to death. I don't understand it. Why would they send someone with your ability to a place like this? All right, enough with the sarcasm. No, I'm serious. In fact, I'm a bit envious. Personality aside, I'd love to be you, Marcus. To have your ability? Don't sell yourself short, Val. What do you mean? You didn't come here for the tropical weather. You came to refine your techniques, to learn the healing touch. But if you've already given up on that, then there's no reason to stay here. Who are you to be judging me? You sulk around here all day like a mistreated dog licking your wounds. Sorry, Val. That didn't come out right. I'm not very good at giving pep talks. All I can think to say is try harder, which isn't very helpful, huh? I'm sorry, too. I shouldn't have snapped at you like that. I guess when it comes to interpersonal communication, I'm no Dr. Montgomery, huh? Well, maybe if you pray hard enough, he'll visit you in your dreams and teach you the right way. And while I have been educated in the school of modern medicine, the epitome of scientific knowledge. I cannot deny the energy I feel emanating from the spirits of those who are ill and from that which dwells deep within me. I soften my eyes. I relax my ears. I quiet my mind and allow the energy to permeate my very being. The spirits raise my skills to a higher plane. 
and I awaken to my true self. Oh, it's no use. I, I can't understand any of this. It says the five-pointed star is a symbol of life. But when I look at it, it simply reminds me of a piece of okra in a bowl of gumbo. I guess the healing touch just isn't for an ordinary person like me. This door's no good. It's been totally warped by the snow. I guess it can't be helped. This hospital isn't exactly new. Well, this door isn't used very often, so it shouldn't be a problem. Mm -hmm. I suppose we should still call and have it repaired. Is something wrong? Uh, oh, my... my stomach. Director? Director! Let's see. Your amylase count is good, your pancreas is functioning normally, your white blood cell count is fine, and I don't see any problems with your immune system. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> Just let me know if you think you're recovering too quickly. I can change some of these numbers and extend your vacation. No, that's okay, doctor. I'd like to return to work as soon as possible. Although, once I've fully recovered, I do have another favor to ask. Marcus! Director Hoover just collapsed! What? He has multiple tumors in his small intestine, and they've already reached a fairly advanced stage. I've stabilized him with an IV and a blood transfusion, but he needs to be operated on right away. Why did he let his condition get so bad? If only he had taken better care of himself. He kept all his troubles and worries bottled up inside, not wanting to burden anyone with his problem. Standing around wondering why won't do him any good. We need to focus on the procedure. The CAT scan we took earlier has confirmed the presence of multiple tumors. The objective of this operation is to extract these tumors. It's progressed this far. I'm worried that there may be further complications. I'm concerned about his physical condition. He's not young, and this operation will be stressful. <sighs> You're the only ones who can help him. Don't worry. You can count on us. That's right. He's in good hands. I won't let him die. Let's begin. Let's begin the operation. The tumors are located in the small intestine. Good luck. The area is a little inflamed. I'll get the anti-inflammatory. Use the syringe to inject the anti-inflammatory.